Welcome to r slash best of Redditor updates, where a guy tries to sleep with his daughter. Our next Reddit post is from r slash advice. Hello, everyone. This is r slash from the future. I'm here to give you some trigger warnings. This story involves incest, sexual assault, transphobia, and a hint of the P word, which I can't even say on YouTube. Wanted to give a fair warning on this one because this story gets wild. I'm a 21 year old woman. How do I tell my sisters, ages 16, 14, 14, and 8, the real reason that I'm moving out without bashing my parents? My mom had me at the age of 18 right out of high school. Long story short, my dad died at 19 while he was away at university. Then, my mom remarried at the age of 21 and had my sisters. My stepdad, Scott, is the only father I've known. He's been a great father, nothing out of the ordinary, absolutely perfect parenting until I turned about 19 years old. I remember Scott was becoming a little more touchy than normal, and a little too personal. He would offer me wine, which I declined, and then would ask me about my love life after one too many glasses. I brushed it off because I thought maybe he was being a nosy father and just wanted to make sure that his daughter wasn't passionately hugging. Then, this kind of stuff continued, to the point where my stepdad tried to kiss me last year. Yo, what? I told my mom, and she just laughed and told me, that's how he gets after too many drinks. I don't usually like to stop in the middle of a story, but I've got to interject here. I've gotten drunk many times in my life. I've never gotten attempt to sexually assault and kiss a family member drunk before. So I just want to throw this out there because I know I've got some young listeners. And no, that is not a phase of drunkenness that people go through. Anyways, back to the story. After that incident, things died down a bit until my mom got pregnant at the age of 39. It's a higher risk pregnancy, so she's on a lot of bed rest and taking extra care of herself per her doctor's orders. A couple of weeks ago, my mom and Scott sat me down and told me that her doctor said that she should avoid passionately hugging during pregnancy due to various health concerns that I won't get into. They asked me if I could passionately hug Scott just until she was able to do it again with him. Of course I said no. I was livid. I was crying. My mom told me she would be okay with it and she would be in the room as well. I told her that's even worse. Like, what are you thinking? I have enough money for an apartment. I got approved and I'm signing my lease next week. My parents are ignoring me and the whole house is full of tension. My younger sisters don't understand what's going on and my mom told me not to say anything. But my sisters are smart, they know that something is really up and they won't stop asking me about it, especially my oldest sister. She came to me crying today and told me that I had better tell her what's going on right now, but I didn't say anything. So, any advice? What do I tell her? What do I say to the younger ones? How do I tell a 16 year old about this without being inappropriate or bashing my parents? OP, without bashing your parents, bash the ever loving shit out of your parents. Your mother is trying to get you, a 19 year old girl, to sleep with your stepdad. How old is your stepdad now? Does it say? No, it doesn't say. Like, <laughs> does it matter? Is there any age where it's okay? No! And your parents have four other girls in their household. OP, I think you actually have a moral and familial obligation to your sisters to report this to the cops. Like, what do you think is going to happen, OP? That your parents are just going to stop? That they'll never try this again? That your four progressively younger and younger sisters are just going to live happy, healthy lives under your perverted parents? Anyways, then OP posted an update. Last year, when Scott tried to kiss me, Child Protective Services interviewed all the girls, and the girls were very confused because their dad has never said or done anything to them inappropriately. My aunt, who's a child therapist and called CPS to begin with, talked to each girl and said there was no sign of foul play. CPS said that it was like a roommate complaining about sexual assault since I'm not his biological daughter. Yo, what is this story? My aunt has been fighting to make my mom leave him for years, but since Scott isn't abusive to her or the girls and makes a lot of money, she won't leave. But my aunt has actually mentioned that he's been manipulating her with kindness all these years so that she would be okay with him having intercourse with me when I became an adult, and it worked. My aunt and I don't think that he's going to hurt the other girls, but you never know. We most likely will call child services again. And then OP posted another update. 
My aunt and I are probably going to call CPS again and try to get the girls out of that house and with her or my grandparents who want them to stay there. My concern is telling the girls. I would be so devastated if I was 16 and someone told me my dad tried to screw with my sister, so now I have to live with my grandparents. So what do I say to her? Do I break her heart? Yes, OP. The options are leave your sister with a sexual predator and she doesn't know that she's living with a sexual predator or leave your sister with a sexual predator but at least tip her off that she's living with a sexual predator. If I'm literally living with a sexual predator, I'd like to know about it. Look, OP, I don't mean to pile on you here. Like, I, you're the victim. I'm trying not to, like, make it seem like this is your fault or, like, your responsibility. It's just you're asking the question and I'm telling you, please, please tell your sisters what's going on. And then OP posted another update. My aunt did what she said she was going to do. She barged in with three other people, one of them a social worker friend of hers who was off duty, and my uncle. None of them are allowed at my house, so as soon as Scott found out they were there, he called the cops. Before the cops even showed up, I told my 16-year-old sister and the 14-year-olds what happened. The 16-year-old got angry at her dad. She was walking around the house ranting at her dad and crying. Eventually, she decided to come with my aunt and I, and then we would figure out where she was going to go from then on. However, the two 14-year-olds didn't believe me. They actually started laughing. Then they got angry and told me that I was trying to destroy our family and how could I make up a sick lie? It got to the point where they threw my and my 16-year-old sister's stuff out the window. By that time, the cops came and told my aunt, uncle, and social worker that they had to leave the property. The social worker friend let the cops know everything that was going on. The cops didn't care, they just cared about the noise and the trespassers. So me, my 16-year-old sister, my aunt, my uncle, and their friend all left. Very soon after, my grandparents came and got the other three girls, after the 14-year-olds came to their senses and called them. I found out from my grandma that one of the 14-year-olds confronted her dad and he didn't deny it. In fact, he called me a whore and said that I shouldn't have had any problem doing what he asked. <laughs> That's when they packed a bag and called my grandparents. He had no kidding. I would run, not walk out of that house if I were that 14-year-old in that situation. My God. My grandparents explained everything separately to the little one. She told my grandpa that she prefers him to our dad because grandpa doesn't yell at her. As much as that pained me, I hope it's enough to keep the girls at my grandparents for good. My 16-year-old sister is going to emancipate herself and stay with either our grandparents or our aunt. CPS was called, but it was my grandparents this time. I have multiple screenshots on my dad and my aunt's phone of my mother incriminating herself. So we'll be able to file charges and hopefully get Scott on the sex offender registry. That way, the girls can stay at their grandparents permanently. Oh my god, it gets worse! Down in the comments, someone asked OP why the aunt and uncle weren't allowed over, and OP shared this story. Because my aunt and uncle hate Scott, and they know he's a creep. Something happened many years ago when I was about 13 at my young sister's gender reveal party. My cousin, my uncle's daughter, is trans, and decided at university that she was female and came back as female. We all accepted and loved her the same. Except Scott, who got drunk and lifted her skirt and said, Do you still have your boy parts? That's when my uncle beat the stuffing out of him and knocked him over a couple of tables. From then on, half of my family wasn't allowed back at our house because of a trespassing order. My aunt and uncle knew then that Scott was an absolute perv. But I, as a young child, didn't fully comprehend it. There's so much wrong with this story, I didn't even know where to begin. Let's start with the obvious. OP's mother can't have intercourse, and the husband apparently can't wait for a couple of months, so it's absolutely necessary that he has intercourse with another woman. Okay, whatever, fine. Why, though, does it have to be with his daughter? Why not with a girlfriend, or with a polyamorous partner, or with a sex worker, or whoever? Why does it have to be with your stepdaughter, who you've raised since she was two? And then to scold her and call her a whore? Since when does not having sex with someone qualify you to be a whore? Huh? What? Huh? That's the opposite of a whore. OP, I'm really, really glad that you were able to get out of that situation. And luckily, your aunt and your uncle had your back. 
My God, I can't even imagine what terrible situation your sisters would be in if your aunt and uncle hadn't done what they did. God, I'm trying, ugh, I can't, ugh. I'm trying to put myself in the shoes of the 14-year-old girl who's like, Hey, Dad, could you believe what older sister said? She said that you tried to sleep with her. Isn't that nuts? Well, sweetie, you know, I did. I'll admit it. I tried to boink your older sister, but she wouldn't, she wouldn't have, <laughs> but she wouldn't sleep with her stepdad, that whore. What a, what an ungrateful daughter I have. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, that's funny. I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna call my, my grandparents real quick. Grandma, Grandpa, you gotta get me the hell out of here. Our next Reddit post comes from r slash drew off my chest. I'm going to divorce my husband of 10 years. My husband and I met when I was 18. It had always been just me and my best friend, but when my husband came along, we became an inseparable trio. For me, it was love at first sight. I had the biggest crush on him, but I didn't want to ruin the friendship thing we had, so I kept it to myself until he confessed to me when we were 20. Things moved fast, and we got married when we were 22. My best friend got married as well, and we've all remained close. We invited my best friend and her husband around for dinner, and we were joking about all the things that we got up to, and my husband brought up how he had always had a crush on my best friend, but then she got a boyfriend, so he settled for me instead. When I tell you, my whole world came crashing down. I realized my marriage of 10 years was him settling for second best, that I was never his first option. After that, everything he did just started to annoy me. He just stopped being attractive to me anymore. We haven't slept together in six months because I feel so disgusted. I just want out. I feel like I've wasted my life. I am disappointed in him and myself for believing that I was the one that he liked. And then OP posted an update. My husband knows about the divorce. I told my best friend and she told my husband. So I came home to a don't leave him intervention where they all wanted to work it out. I've never been so confused because for the past six months, I've been trying to ask him how he feels and what he meant by that comment. Like literally to the point that I've just screamed that question to his face and he's been saying nothing. My best friend has been encouraging me to talk to him but keeping her distance. Apparently, my best friend thinks that we're perfect together and she doesn't want us to lose what we have. But what do we have? We're basically roommates who passionately hug at this point. And then OP posted another update. Today, I got a message from my best friend's husband asking where she was, and I had no idea because I was at my mother's house. Can we guess where she is? She's at my effing house with my effing husband. What weird effing universe am I living in? Anyway, yeah, so I'm leaving and taking all my stuff with me. My mom will have to put up with me for a while. Divorce is definitely happening. I'm going to therapy. And then, incredibly, OP's husband found this post and made this post. So, I found my wife's post. Someone made a video about it and that video got back to me. I would like to tell my side. When I met my wife, I didn't really think much of her. She was funny, kind, and a good friend, but I had no other interest. Her friend, Sarah, was gorgeous. She had long red hair and these soft freckles and long eyelashes. She was my dream girl, but she wasn't interested in me. I noticed that my future wife, Amber, was hanging out with me more, laughing at my jokes and listening to me, and it made me consider having more of a relationship with her. Sarah got a boyfriend about a year into us being friends, and her interest in our friendship group dwindled. She hung out with us less and spent more time with her boyfriend, which left me and Amber alone a lot. I ended up giving up on Sarah and focusing on Amber. We started dating and got married. We kept our friendship with Sarah, but we focused on each other. In the back of my mind, though, it always felt like I'd missed out on something. My marriage was boring. Amber and I were basically friends, and I was working hard to save for a house, and she was working hard to save for future kids, so we were existing alongside each other, not actually together. So, one day, when we were at dinner, I got jealous of Sarah and her husband, who seemed happy, and I made a comment about settling for Amber. Amber shut down after that. She kept repeating the same questions over and over, and it would make me so angry that I didn't want to answer, so I didn't. I guess that was my first bad move. Yo, what the, what is this guy writing? That was your first bad move, OP? Not answering your wife's questions? Okay, okay, okay. 
Sarah messaged me after dinner to check if I was okay, and we kept messaging. She was reassuring me that I did nothing wrong and it would work out. Then, I got a text saying that Amber was planning to divorce me. So, Sarah came over and we tried to stop her from leaving, but it seemed to only make things worse. Sarah saw how distraught I was and she stayed to comfort me. We drank, and in a drunk, stupid mistake, we ended up sleeping together. Sarah confessed to her husband that we slept together, and her husband told Amber. Now, both our marriages are ruined. I regret it so much, and I just wish that I could take it all back. Alright, um, so... Okay, so when the husband started writing his post, I was thinking, okay, maybe we get like some context, or maybe it wasn't how the wife made it out to be. No, it's actually worse, OP. I thought you were going to be defending yourself, but everything you said just made you sound like more of a douchebag. You settled for less, you put no effort into your marriage, like your marriage is boring and you think that's what, her fault? It's your fault, dude. It's everyone's responsibility in that marriage to keep that marriage happy. Then he completely shut down around his wife after she very understandably got upset about that comment. But okay, OP, sure, that was the first thing you did wrong in the situation. Like, <laughs> was this story supposed to make you look better, OP? It actually makes you look worse. The fact that you think this story somehow, like, excuses you must mean that you are a completely delusional person. OP, you're a major douchebag, and I'm glad your wife is divorcing you. That was r slash best of Redditor updates, and if you like this content, check out my podcast where I publish the exact same episodes. Also, hit that subscribe button because I put out new Reddit videos every single day.